more MS-DOS. In this video, we'll cover the following and more. Directories and how to organize your files. Autoexec bat files. Check disk. Backup and restore. Xcopy. Tree. How to write batch files. DOS shell feature. The double space feature. And more switches than you can count. Your files may start out simple, like this. But in mere months, they can look like this, unless you organize your computer the way you think. One of the most important features of DOS is its ability to organize your computer's filing system. The use of directories and subdirectories is the answer. You see, organizing your computer's storage of programs and data is a lot like organizing a filing cabinet. We can equate the root directory with a multi-drawer file cabinet. This root directory is articulated as C prompt. A subdirectory, such as DOS, on a hard drive can be equated to one of the drawers in our cabinet and is articulated by C colon backslash DOS. This is where we placed all of our DOS program files. The same concept will be true for most all of your different programs. Where the subdirectory system comes in handy is where you begin to make subdirectories for data files. Data files are those files that are created from your programs. For example, in Lotus 1, 2, 3, you create a spreadsheet of your checkbook. You then save this spreadsheet in the form of a data file. Now, let's make a subdirectory or file drawer, if you will. We'll use the Lotus 123 program as an example to load onto the hard drive. We might type MD space 123 and press Enter. You can substitute any program here. Maybe you have a word processing program instead and want to make the subdirectory Word instead of 123. This is the level where we will copy or install our program files. Most application programs will have specific installation instructions that tell you to create a subdirectory for the purpose of holding its program files. In many cases, the application program will automatically create this subdirectory for you as a part of the installation process. When we think about it, there are two types of files associated with any application program. First, there is the program file. This type of file actually runs the program. The second type of file is the data file. These files are created by you using the program files. We have covered where the program files should be maintained in a first level subdirectory. But what about the data files? Where should they go? Data files should be saved to a second level subdirectory. Let's continue with our initial 123 subdirectory example. We have established this subdirectory on our hard drive for our Lotus 123 program files. Now we need to create a subdirectory beneath this 123 directory for our data files. At the C prompt, issue the command mdc colon backslash 123 backslash budget and press enter. This will make a directory in the C drive in the 123 subdirectory called budget. Remember, the backslash designates your path. Use it between each level of directory for all DOS commands from change directory to copy, erase, and rename. If paths are not used, DOS will assume you mean the directory you're in in each drive. Many times you will want to create more than one data subdirectory per program to help better organize your data system. In this case, we will issue the command mdc colon backslash 123 backslash finance and press enter. This creates a second data subdirectory next to the subdirectory budget. Now we have the ability to keep our budget data separate from the other financial data. You can have any number of subdirectories and levels. 
Just keep using backslash in a logical sequence. Before we get into some of the other DOS commands, let's discuss the autoexec bat file. This very important file is a set of DOS instructions that are executed automatically when you boot your computer. The autoexec bat file will usually be found in the root directory. If you are not in the root directory already, issue the command cd backslash and press enter. This always brings us back to the root directory no matter where we are in the system. Now, issue the command dir and press enter. You should see the autoexec bat file. If you see this when you issued the dir command, re-enter the command dir forward slash p. Forward slash p, or page, is a switch command that displays one page at a time, allowing you time to see all of your files. You can use the forward slash W or wide switch to see more files at once, but you lose date and size information. Most of you should have found the autoexec bat file by now. If you did not locate it, it may not exist on your system or may be in another some directory or diskette. If you have the file, issue the internal DOS command type space autoexec period bat and press enter. Our autoexec bat file is a simple version. You may find other commands in your particular file or commands in our file that do not exist in yours. The autoexec bat file can be designed and modified to your particular needs. On the first line, we see the command path equals C colon backslash semicolon C colon backslash DOS. This command tells DOS that no matter what subdirectory or drive you are in, you can access the commands or programs in the root directory or the DOS subdirectory. For example, in our case, we have a specified path to the DOS subdirectory. This means that we can issue any external DOS command from any directory or drive with success. In other words, we no longer have to worry about changing to the DOS directory every time we want to execute an external DOS command. Most autoexec bat files have a path command that specifies at least the directories we have specified for convenience. If you do not have a specified path to the DOS subdirectory and wish to execute any external DOS commands, you must be in the DOS subdirectory or for those without a hard drive, have a DOS diskette in drive A. The next commands are date and time. These commands prompt you for the current date and time when you boot the system. It is important to make the effort and enter the current date and time since DOS will date and timestamp each file when it is saved. This can be very helpful in locating files and executing the backup and restore commands. Many of the newer computer systems have a built-in clock that keeps the proper date and time automatically in your computer, making the date and time commands in the autoexec bat file unnecessary. Our next command is prompt dollar sign P dollar sign G. This tells DOS to display the name of the current directory at the drive prompt. In other words, when you change directories with the CD command, for example, CD backslash DOS enter, you will see this prompt instead of a plain prompt. If you have DOS 6.0 or higher, a prompt command is automatic and no longer necessary in your autoexec bat file. Now we're ready to examine some more DOS commands and their switches. A command switch is used to augment a DOS command and is always preceded by the forward slash key. Different commands have different switches. You should note that not all of the switches mentioned in this video are valid for most versions of DOS. Consult your DOS manual for specific switch information.
We will start with some external commands such as check disk. Type in chkdsk and press enter. Remember, if you do not have a specified path to the DOS directory, you need to be in the DOS subdirectory. This command checks your disk for errors and updates you on the space and memory available. If you do not know how large your disk drive is or how much RAM memory you have, this command tells you. The switches for chkdsk command are forward slash f, which will attempt to fix any errors or problems, and forward slash v, which displays a detailed progress report on the check disk process. The next two commands, backup and restore, were designed with the hard drive user in mind. Backup is used primarily to copy a file or files that are too large to fit on one diskette for safekeeping. This procedure is highly recommended on a daily basis to protect your files from loss or damage. You should never attempt to backup and restore program files from the hard drive as some of these files may become damaged during the process. Also note that most software programs come with a written license that states you may not reproduce the program for use in a second computer, whether it is yours or not. This practice is considered pirating and is illegal. In other words, only back up data files. To show this command, let's back up our Lotus 123 data files by typing backup space C colon backslash one, two, three, backslash, budget, space, A, colon, and press enter. Observe the message. It's warning us that all the files in the root directory of the target drive A will be destroyed. It also asks us to place diskette 01 in the target drive A. Our first disk is always 01. Place a blank formatted diskette in drive A and press any key. The backup process will now begin. When the diskette becomes full, DOS will prompt us to insert diskette 02 and press any key to continue. If you did not fill the first diskette, you could have used the copy command instead. We recommend the copy command over the backup command in these cases because the backup command actually alters the structure of the data files, making them unusable until the restore procedure has been done. The new DOS 6.0 has a new backup command called MS Backup. However, if you upgraded from DOS 5.0, the original backup and restore commands are still valid. The backup command has several switches that can be added onto it. The first is the forward slash F switch. This will automatically format the target backup diskette. The command is written backup space C colon backslash one two three backslash budget space A colon forward slash F. It allows you to use a brand new unformatted disk for backup. Newer DOS versions will automatically detect an unformatted disk and format it for you. The date switch will back up every file that was created on or after a certain date, such as December 15, 1993. The time switch will back up every file that was created at 2 p.m. or after. Of course, you can substitute any date or time that you need. The modified switch, forward slash M, will back up files that have been modified since the last backup procedure. The subdirectory switch, forward slash S, will back up files in the specified subdirectory as well as any other subdirectories beneath. The T, D, and M switches were designed to help reduce the amount of diskette storage space required by backing up only the files that have been modified or created since the last time you backed up or since the date or time you specify. The remainder of your file should have already been backed up at some point in time. These switches also reduce the time it takes to back up your files.
We cannot talk about the backup command without talking about the restore command as well. Remember, when we use the backup command, the structure of our files is altered. We can restructure these files back to their original state only by issuing the restore command. You only need to restore files in the event the original files on the hard drive had somehow been altered or damaged. As a restoring example, Let's restore our backup files on drive A to the hard drive. Issue the command restore space A colon space C colon backslash one two three backslash budget and press enter. This restores everything on the A disk to the budget subdirectory of the one two three directory. The message on the screen asks us to insert diskette 01 into drive A and strike any key. It should be noted that when using restore, all the files in the subdirectory 123 budget will be overwritten with the files on drive A and therefore lost. This is the intended result. As with the backup command, the restore command has several switches. The forward slash P or prompt switch causes a prompt asking you whether to restore a backup file to a file that has been modified since the last backup. This switch can save you hours of wasted time rebuilding files you did not want restored. The remainder of the switches are very similar to the backup command switches. The subdirectory switch forward slash S restores files in the current directory and all subdirectories beneath this directory. The M, or modified switch, restores all files modified or deleted since the last backup set was made. Restores all files created or modified on or before the specified date. The after date switch restores all files created or modified on or after the specified date. The L, or time switch, restores all files created or modified at or after the specified time. The E time switch restores all files created or modified at or before the specified time. The N or no longer switch will restore all files that are no longer on the destination directory. Remember that for all date and time functions to work effectively, you must put in an accurate date and timestamp each time you boot your system. The X copy command is somewhat related to the backup command in that it will copy both files and subdirectories from the source drive when the S switch is added. X copy is only available on DOS versions 3.2 or higher. Like the copy command, however, you can only copy the amount of data that will fit on the target drive. In other words, if your source is drive C and the target drive is drive A with a diskette, you can only copy the amount of data that will fit on the diskette. This command will not prompt you for a second diskette when the first diskette becomes full. If you get a disk full message, you need to either X copy a smaller amount of data or use the backup command. To use this command, place a blank formatted disk in drive A. Issue the command X copy space C colon backslash one two three backslash budget space A colon forward slash S and press enter. X copy now copies all files in the budget subdirectory plus all files in any subdirectories beneath the budget subdirectory. We have added a subdirectory called 1993 to our hard drive to illustrate how this switch works. Other switches available for this command include date and time. Just like the backup command, it copies all files created or modified on or before the specified date and time. The V or verify switch verifies that your copies were recorded correctly on the source drive. The P or prompt switch causes X copy to prompt and ask whether a file should be copied or not as a safety precaution.
Our next external command is called tree. This command is designed to give a list of the directories and subdirectories on the drive you specify or the current drive you are in. Issue the command tree and press enter. You will get a list of any subdirectories that exist on your drive. If you would like to know not only what subdirectories exist, but also what files are in those subdirectories, issue the command tree switch F. If you use this command on a large C drive, the information is displayed quickly and is difficult to read unless you are an excellent speed reader. Unfortunately, the tree command does not have a page switch like the directory command, allowing us to read only one page at a time. However, you can issue the command tree switch F and then type the vertical line key followed by the word more. The print command switch also works here as well as for the directory and type commands as well. Let's look at a couple of switches for the format command we covered in introduction to DOS. The format switch S or system switch will place a copy of the command com file onto the formatted diskette so that it can boot the computer. This sometimes can be necessary if for some reason the hard drive will no longer boot on its own. The V or volume switch will prompt you for a volume label after the formatting is completed allowing you to electronically label your disk as you format. Once again the newer versions of DOS will do this automatically. Earlier in our presentation we talked about the autoexec bat file. If you recall, this is the file that has DOS specified commands in it and is executed automatically when your computer system is turned on. We can also create our own bat files to help reduce our keystrokes and time using the copy con method. A bat or batch file allows you to execute a whole series of instructions to your computer with just a few keystrokes. One of the most common bat files created is one that will access a program from the root directory. Let's say we have a WordPerfect program in a subdirectory named WP51. Instead of changing directories and typing the program entrance command, we will create a bat file to do the same thing with the touch of three keys. From the C prompt in the root directory, issue the command copy con WP period bat and press enter. What we are doing here is copying the keystrokes from the console or keyboard, if you will, to the root directory, hence the name copy con. Now type in cd backslash wp51 and press enter. Type wp and press enter. Type cd backslash and press enter. Now press the function key F6 and press enter. The message will say one file copied. Now to execute the command, you would only type WP and press enter. In creating any bat file, you simply type in all the keyboard commands exactly as you would manually. Sandwich them between copy con and F6 and you can repeat all of those instructions with your bat file name. You could create bat files for automatic backup or copy procedures, custom menu systems, and many more. If you perform a procedure often, think of creating a bat file to do the work automatically. You will not only save time, but also reduce errors. The DOS shell is a feature that was introduced in DOS version 4.0. The design of DOS shell is to bring the DOS environment into a more user-friendly presentation. To access the DOS shell program, simply type in the command DOS SHELL and press enter. DOS shell is written as one word. Many DOS commands can be accomplished in the DOS shell program as well as allowing you to create your own menu system for accessing the application programs on your computer. 
To show you all the features of the Shell program would take too much time, but we will show you how to create your own menu. To display only the menu portion of the DOS Shell, press and hold down the Alt key and press the V key. This accesses the view menu. Now, arrow down to the program list selection and press enter. You now see the menu system. To add a new menu choice to the list, press and hold down the Alt key followed by the F key. Select new. The selection program item is already highlighted, so you can simply press enter here. Now type in the program title. In our case, we will use WordPerfect. Then press the Tab key to advance to the next line. The command to access WordPerfect is WP. Press Tab again. The working directory is C colon backslash WP51. Now press the Enter key to accept the new menu choice. You should now see WordPerfect as a menu item. We will go ahead and arrow down to WordPerfect and press Enter to try it out. When we exit WordPerfect, the DOS shell will come back on the screen after we press any key as instructed. To exit the DOS shell program, press and hold down the Alt key followed by the F key. Arrow down to exit and press Enter. One of the features of DOS 6.0 and higher is the double space command. This new command will compress the information on your hard drive, allowing almost double the space you originally had. A word of caution here is that you will definitely want to back up your data files before proceeding with this process or any other disk compression utility available on the market today. DOS 6.2 now has a feature called double guard which will protect against data corruption before, during, and after the double space command is invoked. If you think you may be interested in the double space command, you may want to consider a larger or additional hard drive first. Consult your DOS manual for specific instructions on double space and double guard. This concludes our video. We covered a lot of ground. First, practice what is most useful to you. Review the tape whenever you have a question.